Contra Dogma Against Dogma with Rabba Kweteyama. Let's look at case 1b. We're still on the Ishmaelites and Medianites problem. We stopped at the rabbinic solution to this issue. That's what we're going to look at today. It is clear that the rabbis recognized that the notice in Genesis 37 verses 36 of the Midianites selling Joseph to Egypt rather than the Ishmaelites in verses 28 was a problem. Okay. But they could not just eliminate one of the merchants from the story as earlier interpreters did. We saw what they did in case 1a. The rabbis could not do that. So rather than eliminating one of the merchants from the story, they multiplied them, creating a chain of sales from the brothers to Egypt that took into account all of the various named entities. I'll explain what I mean. We find this in Genesis Rabba. Genesis Rabba. This is what we read. How many deeds of sale were written on his account? That is, was written on Joseph's account. Two rabbis comment, and they disagree. Rabbi Judan and Rabbi Huna disagree on the matter. Rabbi Judan maintained that it was four deeds of sale. Rabbi Huna maintains that it was five deeds of of sale. Let's look at them individually. Rabbi Judah states, his brother sold him to the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelites to the merchants, the merchants to the Midianites, and then the Midianites sold him into Egypt. So Rabbi Judah gives us four deeds of sale. Deeds, D-E-E-D, -E -E -D, deeds of sale. Rabbi Huna disagrees and he claims it was five deeds of sale and he lists them as such. His first four actually matches with Rabbi Judan. He says that Joseph's brother sold him to the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelites to the merchants, the merchants to the Midianites, the Midianites into Egypt, and then the Egyptians to Potiphar. That is how Rabbi Huna gets his five. Let's put them side by side. Notice something that in both rabbinic proposals, we have not only the Midianites and the Ishmaelites on the stage, but as a way of bridging the gap between them, they introduced someone else on the stage, the merchants. So the question is, where did they derive the merchants from? Where are they getting these merchants? Well, let's go back to Genesis 37. Genesis 37 reads, verse 28, Then Midianite merchants passed by. What the rabbis have done is that 
Medianite merchant has become Medianite and merchants. If you read in the verse below, Medianite merchants, as the text states, has now become, according to the rabbis, Medianite and merchants. This is typical classical midrash, midrashim. What do I mean by typical classical midrash? Well, what midrash does is that it sees a problem in the text, assumes that there is a gap in the narrative to be filled that would resolve the problem and finds, or for lack of better words, or creates within the text itself a possible if not plausible solution. Classical Midrash. Not only these rabbis, we have the medieval Jewish exegetes who similarly struggled with this text. Let's look at a few of them. Let's look at Rashi. Rashi comments on this problem. This is his commentary on Genesis 37, 28. He writes, this is another caravan commenting on then Midianite man merchant passed by. This is Rashi's comment. He says, this is another caravan. The scripture informs you that he was sold many times. Okay. Look at the second comment on who pulled Joseph out. He, he, he says, Rashi states, the sons of Jacob pulled Joseph out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites and the Ishmaelites to the Midianites, and the Midianites to Egypt. I want you to note what Rashi says. He made explicit the interpretation that it was not the Midianites who drew Joseph from the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites, as the syntax of the biblical text would indicate. But rather, Rashi is saying that it was the brothers who pulled him out. So we see that Rashi followed the classical Midrash, and then he tells us something that the text doesn't say. Look at what the text says. The syntax of the biblical text indicates that it was the Midianites that pulled him out of the pit and not the brothers. Genesis 37, 28 tells us that Midianite men, merchants passed by and they pulled and lifted Joseph from the pit. But Rashi is commenting on this and he is saying that the sons of Jacob pulled Joseph out of the pit and not the Midianites. So that is problematic. Also, the subsequent sale of Joseph from the Ishmaelites to the Midianites described by Rashi is not found in the text but it is necessitated by the statement in verses 36 that it was the Midianites who sold Joseph to Egypt. Thus, Rashi, with a classical Midrash, invented at least one step in the chain of sales to account for the biblical contradiction.
And not only that, Rashi tells us something that the text doesn't say as well. Now we come to Rajbam. Rajbam was Rashi's grandson. So Rashi's grandson, Rajbam, attempted in his commentary to hold as closely as possible to the plain meaning of the text, what we call Pashat, the simple reading of the text. No gymnastics, no acrobatics, no abracadabra sticks, if that is a word. Simple read of the text in its context. Rajbam, who is Rashi's grandson, rejected the classical view and reverted to a reading that followed the syntax of the text. Commenting on Genesis thirty-seven twenty-eight, Rajbam states, before those Ishmaelites arrived, different people, that is, Midianites, passed by there, saw Joseph in the pit, and pulled him out. These Midianites sold Joseph to the Ishmaelite. It is to be understood that the brothers did not know of the sale. Wow. So Rajbam, who is Rashi's grand son, explicitly rejects Rashi's statement that it was the brothers who pulled Joseph out of the pit. And then he draws the necessary conclusion that the brothers must not have known about it. As the text points out. Awesome, Rajbam. But Rajbam creates a problem for himself when it, when it came to Genesis 37, 36, where the Midianites are said to have sold Joseph into Egypt. So this is what we are told in the text. And the Midianites sold him to Egypt, to Potiphar. Now, since Rajbam had already made clear that the Midianites sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, he had to find a way to understand this apparent inconsistency. Because if the Midianites sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, it should, be the, it, it should be the Ishmaelites that sell Joseph to Egypt to Potiphar. But the text says, it's the Midianites that sold Joseph to Egypt to Potiphar. And since Rajbam had already made clear that it was the Midianites that sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, he had to find a way to understand how the Midianites are the ones who are selling Joseph into Egypt to Potiphar. Rather than take the classical approach and invent yet another sale of Joseph from the Ishmaelites to the Midianites, Rajbam brought evidence from Genesis to argue that, in fact, the Ishmaelites and the Midianites were one of the same people. This is what Rajbam states. Commenting on Genesis 36, sorry, Genesis 37, verses 36. He writes, Midan, Median, and Ishmael were all brothers. And according to the plain meaning of scriptures, Midan and Ishmael are one and the same. The text can then claim that Midianites were the ones who sold him and still claim that it was the Ishmaelites who brought him down to Egypt, since they are the same people according to the plain meaning of scripture. Well, 
this is interesting. This is some gymnastics going on here, some acrobatic works. How credible is this statement? Well, Rajbam is quoting Genesis 25 as his proof text. In Genesis 25, we read, And Abraham took another wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimran, and Kokshan, and Midan, and Median, and Jizbak, and Shua. Rashbam is arguing that Midan and Median were, like Ishmael, sons of Abraham. Although, by his second wife, Keturah. Yet his use of this information is decidedly selective, since he argued only that the Ishmaelites and Midianites should be equated rather than all three groups. It's decidedly selective. Also, this suggestion of Rajbam is never drawn or required anywhere else in the biblical text. It is useful only for this particular passage in solving this contradiction. Rajbam also had to invent a solution. Abraham, Ibn Ezra, and Radak, these are also commentators, actually somewhat agreed with Rajbam with their own twist. Ibn Ezra used a text in Judges to defend his reading of the text. Now, remember, Ibn Ezra and Rajbam claim to be doing Pashat, which is the plain reading of the text, a simple read of the text. The fact that both Abraham, Ibn Ezra, and Rajbam used other biblical passages as the basis for their interpretations only highlights the issue. Neither of them was able to understand the text of Genesis 37 on its own terms, despite their devotion to Peshat, despite they tell us that they came to comment on the plain meaning of the text in its immediate narrative context. But here, they are forced into the standard Midrashic technique of finding a single verse elsewhere in the Bible unrelated to the passage at hand in order to create a reading that eliminates the textual problem. Who can we talk about next? Let's talk about Nachmanides, Ramban with an N, Ran, Ramban, not Rambam, not Maimonides, but Ramban, Nachmanides. Nachmanides acknowledged that the Ishmaelites and Midianites were different groups, but he had them work together to effect the sale and transfer of Joseph to Egypt. Let's see what Ramban says. So, we have Genesis 37, 25, and then 28 on the screen. I put on the screen because it would help us understand what Nachmanides comments here. Nachmanides understood the 
Midianite merchants, mentioned in verses 28, to have hired camels from the Ishmaelite caravan, mentioned in verses 25. The brothers sold Joseph to the Midianites who became his rightful owners, while the Ishmaelites with their camels did the actual transporting of Joseph. This is what Ramban, that is Nachmanides, comments on Genesis 37.25. Also problematic. You can see that for yourself. As we have seen in the rabbinic sources, the simple removal of unwanted elements from the biblical text was not feasible. These were the new ways they tried to interpret away the contradiction. The same difficulty was noted and very similar solutions to it were also offered by some of the major Christian commentators. We will look at the Christian attempt to resolve this contradiction in case 1C in the next video. Contra Dogma with Rabbi Akwete Ahmad.